안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 네, 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 안녕하세요. What we, my organization, have done for many years. Our COE Stage Network is founded in 2009. Uh, it is a non profit organization. We have five full time four volunteers now. It is dedicated to research, education, policy development, and international cooperation for the protection of. Marine environment from marine debris. Um, our three main area activities are research and policy, development, education, and governance, cooperation, and national and international level. All of them go from clean and safe ocean. Our income comes from seventy-five percent of our income comes from research projects, and the other comes from donation and members. Look at this picture. Please guess when it is taken. Which year? 40 hours to clean, except then no housewife in the water. <laughs> this 60 years ago. Then 45 years later, maybe you, you are familiar to this um, figure, this internet or something. This guy, this guy noticed this garbage pen and called Great Pacific Garbage Patch in 2001. It was, uh, it became a catalyst in marine debris issue in the world. So what is marine debris? It is defined as any manufactured or processed solid waste that enters the marine environment from any source. It was defined in 1997 by researchers, and we call it, it uh, marine litter or anthropogenic marine debris or marine litter as well. And recently, plastic is added to the terminology. Do you know why? Because most of marine debris consists of plastics. So generally people say plastic, uh, marine plastic debris or marine plastic pollution is not what is the source of marine debris? It is land based activities such as um, beach recreation or household types, household consuming or upstream discharge, and sea based activities like fisheries or shipping. Actually, marine debris originated of all kinds of activities of human. Especially, <laughs> so what era are we at now? Are we still at the Iron Age? So smart. Yes. So plastic. We are in plastic age, not anymore. Iron Age. Let's look at. Look at yourself, your, your clothes, your, your, your shoes, and computer, the wall, the screen, all 
contain plastics. We are surrounded plastics. And some people named us human, homo, plastics. <laughs> we live every moment with plastics over during whole lives. Uh, plastic production for the last six, 60 years significantly increased. So anyway, 3% increase. And and Asian country consists of 37% of whole plastic production, larger than in Europe. This is the life cycle of plastics. Plastic is extracted from uh, crude oil, and the first raw material is uh, manufactured as uh, plastic resin pellet. And then it is fabricated into many, many, many different kinds of end products, and it's packed in uh, packaging and distributed and are used. used. <laughs> and at the, end, at the end of life, they are go, they are, uh, they enter landfill or burned out. And some proportion of plastic products are recycled, and some of them go somewhere. We, we, we think it, is, it goes to the ocean. But we didn't know how many proportions of plastic production go into the ocean. Last year, Jan Merigal published a very important um, paper in science. It says 2.1 billion metric tons of solid waste is produced all around the world. And 275 million metric tons is plastic waste. And five, uh, 8 million metric tons of plastic goes into the ocean every year. And it goes uh, significantly, in, uh, it significantly increases. So then, what happened in the ocean? What caused, what caused uh, those plastics? The cost problem. Many, many researchers report animals are entangled by marine debris. The last and last examples. And birds and whales or other marine animals take plastic plastic bottles, plastic bottle caps. <coughs> Caps, plastic bags as food. This is diaper, whale ingested diaper in the ocean and then died. Commission on uh, Biodiversity reported this uh, compiled result uh, based on the compiling of all existing uh, documents and reports. They say 40% uh, increase in the number of species of plastics since the last similar review in 1997. So the impact is also increased. It also says whale reports some impacts on marine debris on wildlife in Asia, Africa, and Arctic and Antarctica. The other continents are really, uh, quite common. In terms of the reports, and you have uh, uh, released this uh, article, this news, in the first UNEA, United Nations Environmental Assembly. Uh, it says plastic waste costs 13 billion dollars in annual damage to marine ecosystems. Marine plastic debris cause a lot of economic loss and aesthetic, aesthetic loss for tourism. 
and effects, it causes effects on fisheries as well, and navigation as well. So that's why we focus this, this issue. And I think this infograph or similar tables or fears, you, you must be uh, familiar to this kind of information. It says, estimated decomposition rates of common marine reactors. So, are you familiar with this? Okay. No? So look at this one, only one. Plastic button. 450 years to be decomposed. Can you imagine? Yeah, plastic was invented 100 years ago. So it means preserved and remained. So if Shakespeare bought a bottle of drink and Discard. Maybe it remains somewhere in the ocean, not decomposed. So, no more this kind of information, no more this kind of tables. You don't use this information. Don't deliver this information to others. No? Plastics are forever like that. You remember. And those figures are also familiar ones on the internet. It says, it, is, uh, it describes plastic island in, in the internet. Can you see this? Can you see this in the ocean? Can you, can you travel with this boat to the Pacific Ocean? It's no, no power. <laughs> it is not. Pacific Ocean is near shore, it's coastal, coastal zone. This is land. So, Plastic Island is in your, only in your imagination. USNGO Five Gyres is positioned in Five Gyres. Five Gyres means the five round circle in the first, uh, the second slide. They show the, the result, it's, it's very interesting. They traveled five gyres and collected floating debris with this troll, metal troll, to collect samples of floating debris. And the result is this. There are a few, um, few things, few cups, and small things, that's all. This is the truth of Plastic Island. He found, she found some fishing nets and there are some plastic stick, plastic bottles and there are lots of plastic fragments, very small things. So how small is microplastics? Uh, NOAA United States defined this. Uh, they call mega and macro, uh, it's larger than 25 millimeters or three, and meso and micro and nano. So microplastics ranges from one micrometer to five millimeter. Not that five millimeters. You can see it by naked eyes. It's not very small. But we say microplastics. There are two types of microplastics. One is primary uh, microplastics. It is manufactured for specific purpose, like microbes. Have you heard about microbead campaign? The beat the microbead campaign, which is include, which is a uh, micro uh, spear, plastic spears included in uh, cosmetics. Sometimes it's irregular, sometimes it's rounded. And this is plastic resin pellet. It is raw material. Uh, to send raw material to end product factories and end product, uh, end product factory manufacturing plastic bottles or your computer plastic case or something. So these are primary microplastics. And the secondary microplastics are fragmented one from large items. So 
Primary microplastics can be banned by law because it is a point source. Manufacturers can be controlled by law or something. But secondary microplastics are very, very hard to ban. All plastics should be banned to achieve the goal for no microplastic ocean. You can find some uh, five type or four type or hard, a little bit hard plastic or, or film type plastics uh, in very, very small size. It has potential pathways to ecosystem. Um, first, uh, primary microplastics can be uh, ingested by uh, geoplankton and fish. And secondary microplastics can be fragmented due to uh, ultraviolet or mecha mechanical and microbiological degradation. And it is colonized by rafting communities and segmented <coughs> to the bottom. And paradigm is shift. At first, we focused mega size or macro size of the But if the volume, as the volume entanglement or settling velocity is decreasing, they are decreasing, the impact, like the numbers of fragments or bioavailability or target of the number of target organisms, toxicity, or detection difficulty, and cleanup difficulty are increasing. So why microplastics are focused these days? It is, uh, those are ubiquitous from coast to art. And it is ubiquitous in consumer products. In the beer, you drink, cosmetics, and seafood, toothpaste, even in table salt. Researchers found many, many evidences in our consumer products. And the, there is an increasing trend, and also bioaccumulation through um, the, um, the food chain and Toxicity is also is getting well known these days. So, um, five giants say plastic small, the term of plastic small, <coughs> rather than plastic island, it distributed like a small in the ocean. And the source, um, sources are areas populated by homo plasticus. So it from us. Don't don't try to find these plastic islands. Just look around yourself and ourselves in this classroom. And revenge of our plastic going to the ocean starts. What you eat is what you throw away. So as a consumer, it's time to move. We can take action. Very simple action. No use, no. reduce plastic bottles or plastic, single use plastics or something, or participate in cleanup event. You can do it to make a difference as an individual consumer. And experts recommend some three main challenges. The, the one is to reduce the entry of plastics microplastics into the modern environment. The second challenge is to overcome social, technical, and economic barriers. The third challenge is to influence perceptions and behavior to complement legislation. This is from expert group of marine plastic uh, issue. And you and have got also set the goal as one of the sustainable development goals. 14 is to conserve and sustainably use the, the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. And it says 
also by two, 2025, artists should prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities including marine pollution and nutrient pollution. Actually, uh, sea-based uh, activities should, uh, can be banned by MAPO and expire only sea-based ones. So I think this emphasized land-based activities. And from now on, I would like to introduce ocean solution-oriented approaches. Uh, we, we first, we assess the amount, distribution, source uh, of marine debris, or assess negative impact of marine debris on wildlife, or economy, or navigation safety. And then we find uh, the solution to serious items or sources for decrease or quantities and impact of marine debris. We published 15 research papers for the recent three years. And six of them is um, about distribution and source of marine debris. And the other six are related to policy development. And the, the other three are impact, impacts on economy and ecology. And we submit one new uh, paper on navigation, navigation, navigation safety. All our activities are based on citizen science. Networking and collaboration. Uh, this is an example how to evaluate quantities and sources of marine debris. Uh, we uh, monitor beach debris every other month since 2008 at 20 sites nationwide. Now it, it is still conducted by NGOs at 40 sites. Uh, we found the main sources of which debris come from fisheries <coughs> or sport fishing or something. But generally people believe 80% of beach debris come from land-based activities. But in Korea, sea-based activities more contribute to beach debris pollution. And especially fisheries and aquaculture are the most important uh, sources when you think about the small, only 100, uh, 250,000 people, just this uh, one uh, geography, five percent of population contribute 35 percent of each degree. That's why we focus fisher related to And we found the most important item was style boys. This is for aquaculture, oyster aquaculture in Korea. Aquaculture farm uh, is like this. Look at that, it's white point. This, like this. And I can close. This is white boys without any color. This is real in Korea. And the result is like this. So we have a lot of <coughs> very important sources. We have to consider this. Oyster aquaculture occupies an important position in fishing industries in Korea. So to, to ban using styrofoam buoys at once is not possible. So we try to find solution of EPS buoy with priority, like, like government. <laughs> it's an NGO, but anyway. Uh, since 2009, we organize panel discussion and workshop every year to collect ideas, brainstorming, and the to listen to their opinions, and results to in conceptual panel or something. Uh, we also have in-depth interviews with the fishermen to get very practical idea from cyber uh, users, cyber buoy users. So we found some strategies and potential actions 
according to the causes, like unintended loss of voice in use, intended discard of voice at use, and difficulties to collect and recycle. So we categorized and list of potential actions. But we are, at, uh, we are it, it was lack of um, fisherman's opinion, so we tried to get uh, idea, more ideas from fishermen last year. And this year, uh, we started a new governmental project. Uh, it consists of raising obligatory retrieval rate of uh, used buoys and supporting movement from collection site to recycle factory. And it also includes <coughs> building statistics on inflow and style of cycling buoy and education. <coughs> this is good news. A temporal trend over eight years based on beach monitoring data. The count of each degree, the weight of each degree, the volume of each degree, decreasing. But I'm not satisfied. That is no. I love this one. It's my home. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another example of uh, evaluating impact on my life. We collected existing uh, cases and analyzed. Uh, like uh, you know the the X-ray of uh, uh, photos or this kind of information, we collected all, and we collected 45 cases for two years, then analyzed, and then what we found um, major types of marine debris affecting my life, and most of it has a in Korea. So we found 21 species were impacted by marine debris, and 93% of them were birds, and there were five endangered and protected species. And the mode of impact for entanglements were a little bit more common than ingestion. And you found the most seriously impacting debris item were from recreational fishing. We have evidences from this, 73%. So we started different kinds of campaigns on education or something. And last year, finally, a TV show launched targeting angular between in Korea. So uh, it is. Uh, shown in a fishing TV, it has estimation of 5 million angular watchers. Although the show host claims around the fishing spot, and anglers claiming voluntarily receive a good angler sticker to promote and encourage participation. And the uh, monitoring camera, camera set up to watch angular's behavior and shown on the show, TV show. <laughs> the premiere recorded the most watched show and it lasted for a year. Every other Tuesday, Thursday for 30 minutes. I think this kind of approach can be effective to change angular's behavior because they, they enjoy Recreation, so the fishing in isolated areas and alone, you know, no one monitors, no one can monitor, no one can impose. And we found endangered species, black faced spoonbill, was affected by uh, recreation fishing gear, and then we uh, started to look into these species. Uh, and I, and last of their nest include, included plastic debris like this. You see this? So in collaboration with Water Birds Korea, we compared the before and after providing natural materials for nesting since 2011. And 
can be found. The number of widow quests were in less significantly increased after providing natural materials. So we can find our solution, we can bound, we can reduce the impacts like this. And we also organized also international peace cleanup in Korea. Since 2001, in collaboration with the Ocean Conservancy of the United States, maybe many of your country already participate in international coastal cleanup. It's to raise, it is to raise public awareness and change people's behavior. And we deliver monthly newsletter since 2010, which always includes marine related activities. And this is another uh, in, uh, estimation of economic impact. We estimated 30 million US dollars uh, was caused by heavy rainfall in 2011, and it came from mainland and affected downstream island. So it seriously impacted the economy of tourism. And we also uh, collected all cases of in neighbor vessels entanglement. This is the first in the world, first report in the world. I submitted the paper now, and I'm waiting the answer. Uh, frequency of neighborship entanglement in Korea from 2010 to 2015 by the fishing gear was almost 400 cases a year. There was no exception. All naval vessels were affected by one three built fishing gear. So that's why we have to more focus during fishing gear mitigation. <laughs> and we're also estimating annual input of marine debris in Korea, like Jonathan Beck. Science. Uh, we estimate, estimate the amount from different sources, then we uh, obtain the result. Inflow from ocean based activities comprised of 64% of input. This is very similar to the identification of source of beach debris uh, through monitoring. So this is very reasonable to focus fishing related, ocean related activities like lost fishing gear or general garbage from ships, aquaculture or different from cars. International property is very important because plastic waste input revealed by uh, Janice and Beck's paper shows Asian countries are the main sources of beach debris and our plastic waste input in the, in, to the ocean. So we uh, built a civil forum in 2009. We started with just between Korea and Japan, but now we have eight NGOs from seven countries. The main um, activity of the forum, civil forum, is to publish marine little news biannually. So it describes NGOs' activities on marine media in the region and better cases from outside of the West Asia and Pacific region. So some of you are very interested in this kind of activity, and if you know some NGOs in your country, please introduce me. To build connection. And the other one is we organized uh, a monthly based webinar since 2011. So every month we select one scientific, very decent scientific papers, and we study together, we read and discuss together with engines in Asian region. So now Taiwan, mainly China, and Vietnam participated in our seminar. To, to build capacity. And 
to, to obtain better knowledge in this issue. Our efforts was introduced in UNEP report this year. So this is what I want to say today, all I wanted to say today. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Um, petroleum 
Plastic Industry Association, things like that, declared to actively join to contribute to reduce the water plastic or to reach the water problem. But their action is quite slow. They started, just started. This declaration was uh, just in 2014. So now they just start and to pick this uh, story as a resource is very important strategy, especially in Asian countries. And they can sell for money. But uh, high valuable items can be easily picked by residents, local residents. But the others are discarded, just remained on the beach. So, to encourage most of the plastic, plastic to work is very hard at the moment. But I think your idea is very good. And what I don't know exactly was the solution of food packaging, food uh, related uh, plastic items. It's a very huge challenge. At the moment, I don't know well. Every day, every day I'm concerned about that. <laughs> but I don't know the solution. Just a contribution. Of the East African coast, there are some countries, for instance, who are wired Kenya trying to adapt a policy where we are getting biodegradable material for the supermarkets. It worked. But with the general of our governance, we find that the politics at play would prefer that they produce these plastics, which are for them cheaper. And they are ways of cooking the masses. So if we could adopt biodegradable materials for packaging in the supermarket, then we reduce the plastic waste that we see in the ocean. That's a, a, an observation. Um, biodegradable plastics is controversial, actually. Um, at the moment, no one can say for sure Bioplastics can 100% de uh, are decomposed in the ocean as a natural materials. Some people insist, insist, but at the moment, I, I think most of so-called biodegradable plastics just help fragmentation. It's Sorry, I didn't say biodegradable plastics. Materials like wet lab products, you can make quite the products, yeah. Make baskets out of wet lab products for packaging in the supermarket. That one is better than production of plastics for packaging. That will reduce the number of plastics in the same world. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I understand. Can you say it again? I'm saying yeah. you should encourage production of biodegradable materials as packaging materials. Not plastics, but yeah, yeah, yes, yes. natural materials. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Resource materials like uh, yeah. reusable natural uh, sources, resources can be not alternative. But not renewable natural materials, we should consider. Limitations. So, 
um, let, let me say there are no silver bullets to solve this problem at once. So we hire many different effective and efficient strategies to reduce at multi sources. But the industrial contribution is very, very important. But at the moment, very One use plastic, and you see around there's like three of us with more than one use plastic, but the rest of you have one use plastic, but so it's something very simple and no one's doing. It. It's like we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better off with a face that I can feel and reveal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, it's like one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So we can we can change our behaviors. <laughs> Very simply, like as the buttons. Actually, that is not the best solution of the whole degree, but it's degree, um, yeah, degree issue. But we can do it something. We can do something. Very small things and very easy things. And you know, it's very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As you mentioned, the UN uh, is keeping an eye on this, and I think the international community is waking up now, so to say. I think there's, there's a, in what we see is a beginning to discuss these items globally. Uh, and and uh, I'm going to the conference of the parties of the Convention of Biological Diversity here in Mexico in December. And one of the things that I see where we have a chance now is there will be a business forum where uh, the host have invited the industry globally to come and discuss how biodiversity is incorporated in the big business. And one of the main issues is the sustainable production, as you mentioned. So even though that it might not be only focused on plastic and, and the problem we see, the international community is aware. And I think one of the main issues is to invite the business and the industry to fit into this and to commit. So I think that is a really important step for we see globally now. So, so I think if we can work globally and of course nationally, and it's great work that you're doing, it was really learning, so thank you very much. But I think we, we, we can change it if we are working on different levels. So it's a very good comment. Yeah, I agree totally. Some more questions? Thank you so much for listening.